Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is out uh, saying we really need to roll back the Reagan tax cut. We need to go back, you know, the, t the top tax rate was 91% from essentially, you know, World War II, well, really the, the Great Depression from 1933 forward until uh, 1967 when Lyndon Johnson dropped it down to 74%. And then Reagan came into office in 81, and uh, I think by 84 or 85, he had dropped that down to 25% from 74%. And she's pointing out, hey, you know, we had really, really good growth. The middle class was actually growing faster than the billionaire class during those 30, 30 years that we had a top tax rate that was over 50%, almost 40 years. And the, uh, and the average CEO only took 30 times, only, 30 times what the average worker made, whereas right now the, the number is between 271 and 10,000 times, depending on the industry you're looking at. And uh, isn't it a good thing? to have a more equal society. On the line with us is Julio Rivera, the editorial director at the Reactionary Co Times and the a columnist with Newsmax, Right Wing News and Politichicks. Reactionarydimes.com is the website. His Twitter handle is oh yeah, it's Julio. Julio, welcome back. Hey, Tom. Uh, happy New Year. Well, That's happy fun. New Year to you, Julio. So, so what is good about CEOs making 500 times what their workers make and the rich getting obscenely richer and working people seeing their paychecks decline? Well, you know, just the, the way that you're framing the question, let me just say this. First off, you know, in private business, if a CEO wants to pay himself exponentially more than his workers and he's created that business, he does have a right to do that. But let me tell you something. This whole Ocasio-Cortez tax is a little bit of a mirage. I mean, people that are truly rich, you know, making over $10 million a year, a lot of that is off of investments. And the capital gains tax, is still going to be 20%. So those people aren't necessarily affected. The people Reagan that said that the capital poor, gains tax should be exactly the same as the average income tax. In fact, he campaigned no, on that, and he actually, actually got that in proposed. 1985. Okay, but that's not what we're talking about here. What she's proposing is a, set, what, what is it, 70% on people who are earning, making new income salaries. Over 10 million over a year, 10 yeah. 10 million a year, exactly. Yeah. So, I What's mean, wrong with that? That's not necessarily fair. Those people are still technically, in a sense, I know you're going to laugh this off, but in a sense, they're working class because they're earning, they're actually working, providing a service for the money that they're being paid. 10 and million a year? That I have too, huh? 10 okay. million a year? 10 million. Well, still, they, they still earned it. And the issue is, listen, government. I, I think we have very different definitions of earned. Julio. Uh, but the question, I mean, you know, what, what is wrong? What, who can't live on $10 million a year? I mean, what's wrong with saying, okay, you know. It's not $10 million a year. I mean, it's by the time, by the time they hit, and they're going to get hit for the first 10 million, 37% of their money, and then everything beyond 10 million, 70% of their money. So if you have a $20 million salary, you're, you're going to take home less than $7 million. Oh, but still, I'm heartbroken. You worked for it. You worked for it. No, you know, and the, the issue no, this is, is the whole point, Julio, is, is, you know, we had in the United States for 40 years a period of time when the middle class, the working class in America, was actually, their, their wages and benefits were actually growing faster than the wages of the top 1%. That all mm -hmm. came to a screaming, screeching halt with Reaganomics. And the principal part of Reaganomics that killed the middle class and, you know, what we saw, in fact, in 1980, uh, when, when Reagan was elected, um, you know, the, the, the average price of a home in the United States is around $80,000. Now it's around $230,000. Um, the average salary has not changed since then. I mean, you know, it's, it, no, it, it, and, 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 and the no, reason for that wage, is because all that money has gone up. to the top 1%. No, under Trump, wages are up. But listen, this part of the reason why people have an issue giving the government that much money is because it's estimated that about one over $1.2 trillion a year is wasted. And these are the kind of things that they're wasting out on. $920 million for unnecessary printing costs, unused vehicles. This has nothing to do with the million. argument, Julio. Yes, it does. If, if, you wanna, if you want to cut the why, Pentagon, why? go for it. But that's a completely it's, different conversation. No, We're talking about trying to balance the economy the by, by discouraging rich people from taking enormous amounts of money out of their company so that they will do what they were doing before Reagan, which is leave that money in the company and pay their workers better. No, that's, that's not the solution. The solution is, and this is something that nobody has addressed yet, is really the wasteful spending. I'd like to see Trump in this, this year, this legislative session, address spending reform. Because that's really 
uh, uh, we wouldn't that, have to. That literally has nothing Julio, to do with what, what we're talking about, Julio. Are you are you changing the subject because you're losing the argument? No, liberal progressives always are trying to find a way to take more money from the taxpayer instead of trying to figure out ways where we could be more. I am trying to. Taxes do two things: they fund the government, which is the argument you're making right now, and they alter behavior. Uh, there's a reason why we have higher taxes Listen, on cigarettes and alcohol than we do on carrots and lettuce. Shouldn't be trying to conduct sociological experiments. This and is not an experiment. It's already been done. We know. Habitat for fifty-two million dollars a year. Chimpanzee habitat. Really, I, I'm supposed to want to. We get know, Julio, that when you have a money. high tax rate, wealthy people pay their employees better because they can't take the money out because they don't want to pay taxes on it. What's no, wrong that's with that? Not necessarily true. Listen, you're going off of information. Listen, the business. I'm going off U.S. Census data. Years ago, years ago, you're talking. We're, we're in a different economy nowadays. The fact of the matter is, if we open the door for something like this, where, where the, the, today 70 percent proposal on income over 10 million will be tomorrow's proposal of 90 percent for all income over 2 million. It's just going to get worse, and that's why we have to fight back and roll. Back. So again, that's a non-argument argument. That's 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 you know, I mean, that's 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 absurd. You know, it's like saying, you know, well, well, you know, we we should not have. I mean, fill in the blank because somebody might well, abuse it. What it's, was the that, federal income tax rate in 1915? And 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 look at the way that it's progressed over the years. The more the more it was 91 percent on income over in today's dollars, about 360 thousand dollars, which is frankly where I think it should be. I think that Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is way too generous with rich people, and I think the 70 percent tax rate should kick in. You know, the, when Reagan came into office, that 71 70. 4% tax rate kicked in when you made over about $320,000 a year in today's money. And I think well, that that's where it should be. Well, listen, the good thing is she doesn't, she can't even identify the three branches or units of government or whatever it was. That this has, the, you know, A, nonsense, so no and B, this has nothing to do with that. It, you know, it doing, when, when you resort to personal attacks on people, it just tells right. everybody you've lost the argument. Tom, I don't know why you guys have hitched your saddle to this woman. You know, she's destroying your party. Because she's saying Joe what's Lieberman true. And the moderate wing is coming out against her. Tom Perez is a radical. So and I am he's, still he's not hearing from you, Julio, why it's a bad idea to raise taxes on rich people. I have not heard an argument for that. Because what have I missed? Because the government's just going to continue to waste that money on other. They're going to find other. Well, right now, Trump is borrowing a trillion dollars this year to waste on things. You know, I mean, if, if you've got well, a problem, that's one thing. undo Trump's that's tax Trump. cuts. That's not Trump. That's the legislators. That's there's progressive. Well, it's the Republican tax cuts. I, you know, I agree with you. It's the, the entire Republican Party. Office. Well, the Repub the Democrats and the Republicans. Listen, it's it's on both of them. No, the, not a single Democrat voted for Trump's tax cuts. Not one. Well, they should have. In the House or the Senate. Because it actually did something for the American people. Listen, I'm talking about. It did something for the billionaires. Reform. There's no doubt about that. The Koch brothers made an extra billion dollars in a year. Well, good for them. But you Donald know, well, Trump made money. money. He, you know, has he said to everybody at, at Mar-a-Lago, I just made you all richer. Listen, you, you may not feel it, and maybe I may not feel it, and people in California and cer certain blue states may not feel the effects of the Trump tax cut plan, but that was a gift to his base, which was really the middle of the country. And no, that was not a gift to his base. That was, he was screwing his base by cutting taxes on rich people and, okay. and you know, thus consequently reducing wages for, for low-income people. I don't know. Wages are up, Tom. Yeah, for the moment. Julio Rivera, editorial director of the Reactionary Times, columnist at Newsmax, right-wing news and politics, reactionarytimes.com. His Twitter handle is, oh, yeah, it's Julio. Julio, thanks for dropping by. Thank you, Tom. Good talking with you. We'll be right back.